So, way to Omnes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back on our trip through Caesar. We are picking up in part four of book one, chapter four. Um, Orgetorix has conspired with a couple of other leaders nearby to kind of... They all kind of want to move out of Helvetia and into larger Gaul, but they also then want to have kind of like absolute power for themselves once they do that. And so this conspiracy has been set in motion, um, and they hope that they're going to be able to take over all of Gaul. And we pick up in part four. Ares est Helvetiis perindicium enuntiata. This matter is announced to the Helvetians Per indicium. Uh, I believe your book translates it something as uh, like through informants or something like that. It's The word indication is going to come from this, right? So just kind of like through an indication, through an informing. So somebody somewhere tells the Helvetians, hey, Orgetrix doesn't just want to lead us all out of Helvetia. He also wants to be the supreme ruler of everyone. So, moribus suis, orgetoricem ex vinculis calcem dicra coegerunt. Damnatum poinam seque oportebat ut igni cremaretor. So, according to their customs, they force or compel Orgetrix to plead his case, um, technical term, to plead his case, to, to say his cause, to, to plead his case from chains. So he's going to be arrested, thrown into chains, expected to explain what he thought he was doing. So they, uh, they force him to speak his case from chains, um, and having been condemned, and this is kind of a, a future aspect to it, um, kind of along the lines of if he's condemned, um, or perhaps like once condemned, um, once condemned, a penalty is supposed to follow, uh, or it's, it's necessary for a punishment to follow, namely that um, result clause here, namely that he be burned by fire as opposed to cremated by water or a light breeze. I don't know. Um, somewhat redundant, but there you go. Um, so, he's supposed to plead his case. And having been condemned, a penalty should follow that he be uh, burned by fire. This is a result clause. Um, we don't have our typical indications for a result, so nothing like um, such a penalty followed that or anything along those lines. It's just a penalty was supposed to follow, the result being, he is burnt by fire. Die constituta causae dictionis, orgetorix ad judicium omnem suam familiam, ad hominem milia decem, undica queget, et omnes clientes, obaratosqua suos quorum magnum numerum habebat, eodem conduxit, per eos, ne causam dicaret, se eripuit. So, Die constituta, ablative of time when, on the established day of Calci Dictionis, of speaking his case, or of the, the speaking of the case, or the trial, basically, on the day of the trial, Orgetorix, um, coeget, we want to go to, well, actually, don't want to go to that verb yet, no, I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, coeget, and then conducts it, which are very similar. Orgetorix kind of forced or brought together on all sides to the trial, he brought together his whole family, omnim suum familiam, all of his family, ad omnum milia decem, to 10,000 men, or to the number of 10,000 men. So, uh, he brought them from all sides, basically from everywhere to the trial, um, up to 10,000 men. Um, and uh, conducts it, uh, conducts it aodem, and to the same place he led, so again, just kind of more or less echoing that, he led to the same place, omnes clientes, all of his clients, so clients, employees, kind of in a more modern sense, and all of his obaritos, all of his, uh, I believe the book says debtors, the people that owed money to him. Um, he led all of them, quorum magnum, numerum habebat, of which he had a great number, he led them to the same place. So to this trial, he doesn't just show up with like his lawyers, he shows up with all of his family, his familia, right? And I say family, 
Uh, it's the Roman familia, right? Which is obviously relatives, but also slaves that he might have, kind of basically his whole household, which apparently at 10,000 people. He is the richest of all the Helvetians by far, so um, he's going to have a lot of slaves, a lot of people living with him. So, um, so he brings all these people, all of his clients, his debtors, his family, uh, and Per Eos, through them, by means of them, he say eripuit. He snatched himself away. He kind of stole himself away. Ne calsam decret purpose clause, so that he not plead his case, or in order to not speak his case. So he's guilty. He knows he's guilty, and so he brings all these people there. And I presume that in the confusion, um, he's able to sneak out, because you know. 10,000 plus people, if this if, if this counting is to be believed, that's a lot of people to show up to a uh, to a courtroom. It'd be very easy for you to sneak out. Cum kiwitas ob eam rem incitata armis, jus suum exequi conaretor, multitudinem quaminum ex agris magistratus cogerent, or getrix mortuus est. Neque abest suspicio, uta weti arbitrantor, quinipse sibi mortem consciverit. So we get a cum clause here, cum cogerent. Um, so while the citizenry, while the state, um, well, no, no, sorry, I go to conorator, my mistake. While the state, kind of like while the citizens, on account of this matter, um, or inquitata of Amram, while the state, incited on account of this matter, kind of roused um, because of this, while they uh, tried to pursue or to yeah to pursue their law to pursue their justice um, with arms with weapons um, I think you could have armies going with exequi I think you could have armies going with inquitata probably going with exequi they're kind of pursuing their law with arms with weapons I don't think it'd be entirely wrong to say incited to arms. Um, so while the citizenry is trying to kind of dole out punishment um, because of this, and cum, the cum clause being repeated, and while the magistrates, while the officials are forcing a multitude of men or perhaps gathering a multitude of men from the fields, so we're kind of trying to round up Orgetrix, while all of this is going on, Orgetrix was dead. So while the, the citizenry is perhaps um, getting, you know, their, their torches and pitchforks to track him down, and while the, um, the politicians, the, the judges and whatnot are trying to, you know, rouse the, the sheriffs and the, the militia and whatnot, while all that's going on, Orgetrix died. Okay, sure, why not? Um, and it is not without suspicion, or technically, and suspicion is not absent. But here, um, it's tempting to take that as that, um, the suspicion that the Helvetians think, but actually it's, uh, it's but meaning as being used with an indicative verb. So the suspicion is not absent, as the Helvetians believe. Um, Quinn here used with this thing of suspicion. It is not without suspicion that uh, he himself committed suicide. Literally, like, he conscribed death for himself or something like that. But um, the suspicion is not absent, um, but that he killed himself, as the Helvetians believe or judge. Which, um, it makes sense, I guess. Um, I mean, he's clearly escaped, right? Um, he, he knows he's not probably going to be found innocent, even if he does plead his case well. So, um, yeah, he sneaks away and then pr probably kills himself on his own, which I, I assume that that is preferable to being burned alive. So, um, depending upon how he did it. So, there you go. So, that's a sudden, um, result to Orgetrix's, uh, plans to kind of take over Helvetia, which is fine.
funny because that's kind of what Caesar is going to do in about 15 years. He's going to conspire with two other dudes, Pompey and Crassus, to kind of rule all of Rome. And then people get upset by this and he dies. And apparently Caesar must think that he's going to do it better 15 years later. You, you would think that this is a nice like warning. It's like, maybe you shouldn't do that sort of thing. But there you go. So, Orgetrix has died. The, the person responsible, um, kind of the inspiration for running, um, I almost say like running away, but for leaving Helvetia and going to take over all of Gaul. So, uh, so what are the Helvetians going to do? Post eus mortem, nihil ominus helveti id quod constituerant facra conantor, ut e finibus suis exeant. So, after his death, post eus mortem, after his death, nevertheless, nihil ominus, the Helvetians try to do id quod. Um, they try to do that thing which they had decided. Um... And then here's the, the result clause of what did they decide? They decided with the result that, or result clause kind of going off of what they're trying to do. They decide to do that which they decided. Namely that they leave from their borders. So they're, they're going to try to leave Helvetia and go take over all of Gaul anyway. They're just going to do it without Orgetorix. Okay. I don't know why you wouldn't just like let him at least kind of lead you to the promised land and then kill him. There you go. Ubi yam se ad eam ramparatos es arbitrati sunt, opida su omnia, numero ad duodecem, vicos ad quadrigentos, reliqua privata edificia incendunt. Fermentum omne, praeter quod secum portaturi erant, comburunt, ut domum reditionis spe sublata, paratiores ad omnia periculus subeunde essent. Where's my period? Okay, just a little more. Trium mensum mulita kibaria civi quem quodomo efere jubent. That's a chunky sentence. Look at that. Uh, but, as always, we can break this down and make much more sense. So, let's go to punctuation. Ubi yam se ad eam remparatos esse arbitranti sunt. So, ubi yam. When now? Arbitranti sunt deponent verb. So when they decided, when they judged that indirect statement that they say were prepared ad amrem, prepared for this thing, they're going to do the next bit. We can go to the semicolon here. When they judged that they were ready to set out or to, to do this thing, in kendunt, they burn. They burn all pita su omnia. They burn all of their uh, towns. I'll go with towns for Alpida. They burn all of their towns in number. Um, <laughs> ablative of counting or something. Um, in number up to 12. Uh, so they burn all of their villages up to 12 in number. Their, or their, yeah, their towns. Their villages, numero ad quindrigentos, up to 400. And they also burn reliqua privata edificia. They burn the remaining private buildings. So, Alpida are towns, I believe, um, that these are, would be considered walled towns. So these are towns with defenses. Perhaps not an urbem, right? Not a, an urbs, a city, but large enough that it's worth defending with a wall. Whereas a Wikos is, uh, a Wikos is, it's a village. This would be a, a much smaller town, would not probably have a defense system, or at least would have a very basic defense system, probably not major walls or anything. So that's where there's like 400 of these. Um, and then remaining private buildings, so farmhouses, um, that sort of thing. So they just kind of burn everything to the ground. So there you go. Fermentum omne. Praetor se quod se comportatori erant comburant. Um, so all of so all of the grain, except what um, they were going to carry with themselves, what they're going to take with themselves. Portatori future participle here. So all the grain, except what they were going to take with themselves, they burn. Similar to incandent, right? So incendiary versus combustion. Both both involve um, arson, essentially. Um, and they burn this 
And we get an ut here, and we get an ut with a subjunctive. Actually, we get this nice ut with a subjunctive verb and a, uh, a gerundive. So nice, um, all sorts of grammar points coming here. This is a purpose clause. So why do they burn all of these things? So that pride, uh, paratiores ad omnia pericula subeunda esset, so that they would be paratiores, more prepared ad omnia pericula subeunda, uh, prepared, uh, more prepared to undergo subeunda, to undergo all dangers. Um, odd plus a gerundive here showing a purpose. And they would be um, prepared or more prepared to undergo all these dangers, domum reditionis spe sublata, with the hope, and this is an out of absolute, with the hope of a return home removed. So if they don't have any houses to go back to, any towns, villages, any food to go back to, um, might as well soldier forward. There's going to be more ahead of you um, than there is behind. So definitely, a, you know, it's a, it's a bold move, but definitely one that will perhaps help spur you on and, and motivate you to, to continue. Um, and we continue just a little bit more for the sentence. Trium mensum molita kibaria sibi quem quod domo efferre iubent. They order, the Helvetians order, um, each man quem qua. Um, so this qua here is not really the and that we're used to. Uh, quisqua is the word meaning each man or uh, every man. So they order each man to carry from his house domo efferre. To carry molita kibaria, ground grain, basically, um, kibos, right? To carry this kind of milled grain. Milled grain of three months, genitive of, uh, it is it's genitive of count. Um, so it's the grain of three months or for three months. So they order everyone to take a three month supply of grain with them. So. Burn everything down, except what we're taking with us. We're taking three months supply. So, all right, let's um, let's get to going to Gaul. All right, persuadent raracis et tulingis et latobrigis finitimis uteodem usi concilio opidi suis wicisque exustis unacum is proficiscantor. Boiosqua, qui trantrenum in colu erant, et in argumenoricum transierant, nor eum qua apugnabant, receptos ad se socios, sibi ad skiscunt. Persuade, they persuade. Um, which is going to explain all of these genitives. They, explain, uh, they persuade the Raraki, and the Tulingi, and the Latobrigi, their neighbors. Uti. Um, uti is the same as ut. Um here um they explain they persuade them to indirect command to proficiscantor unacum is to set out together with them una here um used with cum meaning kind of like as one with or like in one group with them so they encourage these people to set out together with them and we get two ablative absolutes going with that. Uh, or not two ablative absolutes. This is just a regular participle taking an ablative. Usi, deponent participle from utor, that takes an ablative. So having used the same plan, um, now we get the ablative absolute with all of their opidis, with all of their towns and their villages burned up. They convince the Raraki to, and, and so forth to set out with him. So um, they're like, hey, guys, Araki, Tulingi, Latobriki, we're going to burn all of our stuff and move out. Want to come with? And apparently that worked. <laughs> they persuade them to do so. And uh, boyos, we're changing grammar structures here, right? Arakis, Tulingis, Latobrikis, these are all datives with persuadent. Boyos, that is an accusative. So something else is going to happen to the boy. Um, so the boy who uh, had lived across the Rhine and who had crossed Transierant in Agum Noricum into the Noric land, 
um, and who were kind of attacking Norea. Um, the boy, having been received to them, or having been kind of like brought, um, welcomed, I guess, having been accepted to them as companions, they welcomed them to themselves, or like welcomed them as companions to themselves, having been received to them. It's all, I feel like it's, I understand definitely what's going on here with the grammar, but it's, it's weird, right? They received the boy to themselves, or having received them, like they received them as companions to themselves, received to themselves. It's a bit redundant, but that's what the boy are. They're, they've been crossing over and, and fighting people, and the Helvetian is like, hey, you want to come do that with us? We're going to go do some pillaging and looting. Feel free to join. So, they, uh, they've got a, a pretty good little party, and that's going to be making their way to Gaul. So, let's, um, we'll do, we'll do six, and then maybe I'll leave seven for a, a separate video, or maybe I'll just do them all together. We'll see how the time goes. Errant omnino itinera duo. Quibus itineribus domo exira possent. Unum persequanos. Angustum et deficile. Inter montem iorum et flumen rodanum, vix qua singuli cari ducarentur, mons altum altissimus impendevant, ut facile per pauci prohibera possent. Alterum per provinciam nostram, multo facilis adco expeditius, propteria quod interfina sevetiorum et alabrogum, qui nuper pacati erant, rodanus fluit, isqua non, non nullis locis vado transitor. Whew, another chonky sentence, but... Again, punctuation and punctuation should be relatively straightforward. We can go to a good semicolon here. So, errant omnino itinera duo. We can kind of translate this um, similar to the way we did the very first sentence of uh, Caesar. There were, in all, journeys. Two. So, there were... It, omnino is like completely, right? Um, omnis. So, there were entirely two journeys or two paths um we would probably in english say something like there were only two paths quibus itineribus uh, by which paths they were able to leave their home so um i'm trying yeah so unum here is neuter going with iter iter is a neuter Noun. So one journey, unum iter, uh, was. I think we need to just supply an est in here. One journey was through the Sequani. Angustum et difficile. So this is describing the journey. The journey is narrow and it's difficult. It is between the Jura Mountain or Jura Mountains. I think it's, it's a range. And the uh, modern day Rhone River or the Rodanus River kind of along which or by which path, um, single carts, um, so carts in single file, were scarcely led, were barely led. Um, so it's a, it's a very narrow path, right? And that's going with the Angustum. It's narrow, it's difficult, it's between this river and this mountain range, um, kind of along which scarcely carts, you know, carts could barely go one by one. Um, Altem, however, um, a very tall mountain was hanging over this journey, was hanging over this path, with the result that, um, a few people, Parapalki, that, with the result that very few people were able to kind of block it, were able to prohibit this journey easily. So, you get this path... It goes through the Sequani, and your, your textbook, if you're using the uh, Mueller textbook, has a very um, good map that shows what's going on here. So the Sequani trip is going to be narrow. They're, it's a lot of people, right? It's their whole country, um, and uh, like like four or five of their neighbors. So like you got like five kind of like nations all going through this, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, 
And to go like single file, um, to like barely be able to go single file through this trip, yeah, um, not ideal just in terms of efficiency. But also, theoretically, you could set up like four guards with some bows and arrows um, and keep people pretty easily from going along this journey. So that's what uh, that's what this part means. Um, you've got this high mountain hanging over it, so really you just put a few people up there to kind of attack from above, and you're going to pick them off in this kind of bottleneck. So that's one journey, narrow and difficult. The other of the two, the other journey was, um, and is this one of the first times we're doing this in Caesar? Um, I believe so. So. Uh, when in doubt, if you cannot find a verb, um, like a, a main verb, we've got other verbs going around here, but we don't have any like main verb. Simply supply an est. Uh, we'll do this a lot in Virgil. You'll just need to supply there was or something was this. Uh, not uncommon to leave the verb to be out in in standard Latin. So one was through the sequani. Another was. Perpowinkiam Nostrum was through our province. And this is the province that Caesar's in charge of, right? Caesar is in charge of uh, what is now northern Italy, what was then Cisalpine Gaul. So that's the province that he's in charge of. And he, um, and this is going to sound kind of like modern um, issues, right? There's this caravan coming to his borders. What is he supposed to do about this? So this is a decision that Caesar has to make. So the other journey was through our province. It was much easier and quicker. Facilius and expeditious, these are both comparative adjectives, uh, but they're neuter, and the neuter comparative uses an I-U-S rather than an I-O-R. So it is easier and quicker by much, or a lot. Propteria quote, because um, it was between the borders of the Helvetians and the Allobroges, uh, who recently were pacified, who had recently been basically conquered by the Romans. Um, the Rhone uh, flew, flowed, flows, flows um, between these, or flows there between these borders, um, and it is crossed, um, Isqua referring back to the Rhodanus River, and the Rhone River, it is crossed, um, in not, literally, it's crossed in not none locations. So it's crossed in several locations by wading. So perhaps other parts of this river, right? Perhaps when we get up here, you can't just kind of ford the river. Um, it's going to be deep. It's going to be swift, perhaps. And you can really only use a, a bridge to, to get across it. However, um, at this point, between the, the Helvetians and the Elabroges, um the Rhone is flowing and it's it's gentle. It can be, you don't need to find a bridge. You can just cross, you know, however many wide at a time across this river because it's relatively shallow. All right. Um, oh, short sentences now after two very long sentences. Extremum opidum alabrogum est proximum qua hoetion finibus genawa. So, the furthest town of the Allobroges is, and the closest town um, to the borders of the Helvetians is, it's thrown in such a weird place. Um, the furthest town of the Allobroges, and the one closest to the borders of the Helvetians, is Geneva, modern day Geneva. All right, um, again, another short sentence, very nice. Ex eo opido, pons ad hawetios. Pertinent. From that town, a bridge stretches to the Helvetians. Stretches to the Helvetians, crosses over to the Helvetians, reaches to the Helvetians, something like that. Whatever bridges do. All right. So, the, you know, there's this bridge that is convenient, but also you can just ford the river. So there's, there's all sorts of ways for the Helvetians to cross into our land. Alabrogibus sese, well persuasuros, quod non dum bono animo in populum romano viderentur, existim mabant, well we coacturos ut persuos fines eos ira paterentur. Alright. Um, this sentence, 
Um, you get a couple of different things. I think I want to start with existing mob aunt. They believed. This is a weird place to find your verb. We're going to have to go into the middle of the sentence, really, to uh, to get it rather than at the end, as you as you might expect. So they were estimating. They were believing. This is the Helvetians are believing because Alabrogibos is dative. They believed that they would persuade the Alabroges. Um, and you're going to get this well, and it's going to answer this well back here. So they believed that they would either persuade the Alabroges to do something, or they would coacturos them. They would, we coacturos them. They would force them or compel them by force. So... We get two halves here. Ultimately, the main clause is they believe that they were going to do something to the Alabrogibos. For the Alabrogues. They believe that they would either persuade the Alabrogues um, because they, the Alabrogues, um, did not yet seem non doom vida rentor. They did not yet seem to be, uh, they did not yet seem to be in a good mind towards the Roman people. Um, so, whereas the Alabroges had been recently pacified, perhaps there's still some bitter feelings, and so if they ask the Alabroges to let them through, they're like, yeah, we don't care what Rome thinks, go ahead, go on through, whatever. Um, so, they believe that they could persuade the Alabroges, or they believed that they would compel them by force. So, just beat them up. Ut, indirect command. They believed that they would be able to get the Alabroges to allow them, um, allow them to go through their borders. So, um, either the Alabroges are going to be like, yeah, sure. Come on through. We don't care. We don't like Rome anyway. Or eh, they're not going to withstand the uh, the firepower. All right. Last last two sentences I'll do as one. Omnibus rebus ad perfectionem comparatis diem dicunt. Qua die ad ripem rodani omnes conveniant. Isties erat ante diem quint, uh, quintum calendas apriles lucio pisone. Aulo Gabinio Consulibus. Um, for all of these, or on, kind of on account of all of these affairs, or sorry, let me actually do this out of absolute correctly because it's going all the way down to uh, Comparatis. With all of their stuff, with all the matters arranged or gathered to set out, ad perfectionem, they establish a day. They set a day. On which day they would all convene, omnes can they would all convene ad ripem rodani, at the bank of the Rhone. This day was five days before the calends of April, um, when Lucius, Piso, and Alice Scabinius were consuls. Um, out of absolute to show the year, and then your standard calendar day. So five days before the calends of April, which your book tells you, um, for sure, and I didn't do this off the top of my head, it's It'd be like March 28th or something. I think that's right. So. So. All right. Um, they decide they're going to cross over all at once, right? So they're not going to kind of like take their time. They want everybody together. Because it's going to be more of a show of force, right? The Albroges, you know, even if they're not persuaded purely just by like, they don't care about Rome. At least they might be persuaded by, look, we, we don't want to fight. So fine. Uh, come on through. All right. Um, it'll be a longer video, but you don't have to watch all of it. We'll go ahead and do seven, and that'll finish off the Latin for book one. Caesari cum id nuntiatum esset, eos per provinciam nostram iter facer conari, maturat ab urbet profecisci, et quam maximis possest isteneribus in Gallium ultiorum contended, et aganavum pervenit. All right. So... Caesar uh, frequently likes to start his clauses with himself. 
sorry, cat wanted out of the room. So, uh, even though Caesar isn't the sentence, he does like to go first because he's the most important. So, um, when, cum, when it was announced to Caesar that, and we get indirect statement, what was announced? It was announced that they were trying to make a journey through our province. When that was announced, he maturat, he hastens. Um, the word mature is going to come from this, right? He matures, so like his idea, his plan comes to fruition, sort of idea. Uh, he matured, matures. <laughs> he hastens to set out from the city and um, he hurries into ulterior Gaul, into uh, farther Gaul. Quam maximis potest itinerbus, in as big of journeys as possible, in as long of journeys as possible. Um, quam maximis itineribus is what you would normally see in um, a beginning textbook, right? Quam plus a superlative, maximis here in a regular superlative, but superlative nonetheless, as much as possible. Caesar actually puts the as possible in there for us. So, um, he hurries with as big a journey as possible into further Gaul, and he arrives at, or he arrives ad Genal, and this is an important thing. He doesn't arrive into Geneva. He arrives near Geneva. Cities, towns, small islands don't use prepositions when describing locations. Um, if you go to them, you use the accusative. If you go from them, you use the ablative without prepositions, and if you're staying around in them, you use the locative uh, case. Uh, Geneva being a town uh, normally wouldn't use a preposition. If it does use a preposition here, if it uses odd, that means he arrived towards Geneva. Um, so it means in the location of Geneva. So he's maybe a, a couple miles away from the city at this point. Provinciae toti quam maximum potest, there's that quam maximum potest again, quam maximum potest militum numerum imperat, erat amnino in Gallia ulteriore legio una, pontem, qui erat ad genauam iubet riscindi. So, um, he orders the whole province, provinciae toti, dative here as the object, or as the kind of the indirect object from imperant, imperat. The, the person or thing that you order is going to be in the dative in Latin. So he orders the whole province, um, or you might say he orders from the whole province, quam maximum potest militum uh, numerum. He orders quam maximum potest numerum, as large a number, pot, uh, numerum, as great a number as possible of soldiers. Um, there was entirely, in further Gaul, and like in those re realms of Gaul, there was entirely one legion, or only, again, one legion. So he wants, um, he needs to defend against all these Helvetians crossing over, and there's one legion, about 5,000 people, 6,000 soldiers, um, there. So he needs some reinforcement, so he orders as many as possible um, from the entire province. And... Um, so that's imperat. And then, again, notice the grammar that we can use to our advantage here, right? Imperat takes a dative. He ordered the whole province. Pontem is accusative, and that's going with the other verb for commanding, you bet. He orders the bridge, which was towards Geneva, which was at Geneva, to be cut back. And Riskindi here is passive uh, infinitive. He orders it to be cut back or to be destroyed. Alright. Ubi de eus adventu, helvetii certiores facti sunt, legatos ad eum mitunt, nobelissimos civitatis, cuius legationes nameas ed veru cloitius principem locum obtenebant. Qui, dicerent sibi esse in animos sine ulo maleficio iter per provinciam facra, propteria quod alir iter haberent nullum, rogare ut eus voluntate id sibi facra liceat. So, nice long sentence there. So, let's break it apart as usual. Ubi deus ad to helvetii caturis facti sunt. When the Helvetians literally were made more certain, um, or you could just translate it as like we're informed. When they were made more certain, 
of his arrival, about his arrival. So when they were when they were informed about his arrival, they send legates or ambassadors to him, the most noble of their nation. Um, of which the ambassadorship, of which embassy, um, Nemaeus and Vericloitius were holding the chief position. So they are the the head ambassadors, which, again, must mean something for the Romans, does not mean anything to me. Qui decurrent, um, relative clause of purpose. They send these guys who were to say or who were to explain, um, or you could just translate that as to. So relative pronoun plus uh, subjunctive, in this case, being used as a, it's a combining a relative clause, qui, and a, uh, a purpose clause, which decurrent, into one, and you just drop the elect. So, uh, they send these guys to say that um, for them, you know, uh, for the Helicians, there was, in their mind, there was in Animo, um, it was, in, they, they had in mind, basically, it was in their mind to make a journey through the province, into Pippa Winkiam Fakra, sine ulo maleficio, without any malice, without any, any uh, evil intentions. So, they send these guys to say that there was no, you know, they were, they just wanted to go through the journey, uh, just, they just wanted to cross through, just passing through. Um, on account of the fact that um, they had no other journey, aliud iter nulum. Um, and um, decurrent, I, I think going kind of governing this rogar as well. And like they were to say that they were asking um, that it be permitted to do this, that this thing be permitted for them, id sibi facer liceat, it be permitted to do this thing, eus voluntate, um, by his volition, or like with his willingness. A is here referring to Caesar. Uh, remember that se, um, sui sibi se, uh, refers back to the subject. So, um, sibi, Referring back to the ambassadors, Nemeas and Vericloitus and all the others, or the Helvetians in general. Same thing with this city. Um, but A is here referring to not Helvetius, or not the Helvetians, so in this case, Caesar, his kind of will. Caesar, quod memoria tenebat lucium casium consulem occisum, executum quo eus ab hawetiis pulsum et sub jugum misum, concedendum non putabant. Neque homines in imico animo, data facultate per provinciam itineris faciundi, temperaturus ab inuria et maleficio existim abant. All right, so what does Caesar do? Caesar, because he held it in his memory, uh, literally memoria tenebat, to hold in memory, or just like to remember, uh, because he remembered that, and this is going to take an indirect statement explaining why you've got your accusatives here, um, we don't have full infinitives. Um, we've got the perfect passive participle, um, okisum and pulsum and misum. Supply est, uh, or in this case, essa, to get your kind of full verbal uh, infinitive. So, Caesar, because he remembered that, or was, you know, kind of mindful that Lucius Cassius, the consul, had been killed, and his army had been kind of uh, driven away, driven back by the Helvetians, and had been sent under the yoke because, he remembered that, he did not think that it should be conceded, that it should be allowed, that is, to let them go through the uh, to go through the path, or to go through the province on their journey. Sub yuga misum, uh, to send under the yoke, you, it, it's a very, it's a very humiliating act. To, uh, to do this, if you, if you beat another army, rather than just kill everybody or, you know, capture them and put them into slavery or, or ransom them or something like that, you could thoroughly embarrass them by, you would take some spears or whatever, set up um, basically a, a yoke of sorts. You basically would just, you know, 
two uh, spears in the ground with a crossbar between them. And you would force everyone uh, of the opposing enemy to kind of bow down and walk through this arch. Um, kind of uh, symbolizing that they are being yoked, which is something that you would put on beasts of burden, right? You would put a yoke on oxen or on slaves, right? Um, it's a very embarrassing thing to have to kind of bend over and have this burden placed on you. And so the Helvetians beat, they killed the uh, Cassius, they drove the Roman army back, and they sent them under the yoke, and then they go back to Rome with this humiliating uh, defeat. And Caesar remembered that and decided, you know what, I don't think these Helvetians can be trusted. Um, he also didn't thank existing Mabant Nequa. Uh, he does not thank that, or did not thank, past tense, he did not think that men with a hostile mind, or with an unfriendly spirit, with an opportunity of making a journey through a province given, so this is a long ablative absolute, I'll break it down a little bit, uh, facultate, your uh, the noun part of the ablative absolute. Faciundi itineris gerundive phrase in the genitive, uh, modifying this opportunity. What sort of opportunity? An opportunity of a journey being made. So the opportunity of making a journey uh, through the province, Perkowinkiam. With that opportunity given, um, he does not think that men um, would restrain themselves, would um, would temper themselves from injustice and malice. So, um, yeah, the Helvetians are not friends of ours, and the thought that these this, this kind of hostile enemy, or at least unfriendly enemy, just kind of crossing through our borders, it's like, are they really going to be able to restrain themselves? It's like, well, we're here, might as well just pillage a couple of things on our way out. So Caesar basically is going to tell him no. However, Tommen... Uh, Tamen ut spatiam intercedera posset du militus quos imperavit convenirat, legatis respondit diem se ad deliberandum sumpturum. Si quid valent ad idus ipriles reverterentur. However, uh, purpose clause, so that a space might intercede, so the space might pass, a space of time, so that um, a, a bit of time might pass until... The soldiers, which he had ordered, convened, so uh, you know, uh, so that a space could pass for the soldiers to arrive that he had commanded. He told the legates, or he responded to the legates, that indirect statement that say that he Caesar would take a day to deliberate. He would take a day to think about it. He says a day to think about it. He's actually going to take about two or three weeks to think about it. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure what DM is doing here, if it means like a bigger chunk of time, if it means a lit it can't mean a literal 24-hour period. Because, um, one, the soldiers are not just a day away. Uh, and also, si quid wellent ad idus apriles rewer terentor. If they wanted anything, si quid wellent, they should return on the Ides of April. Well, they decide that they want to cross five days before the Calends of April, which would be March 28th, um, and he's telling them to return on the 13th of April. So you're looking at two, almost three weeks there. That's definitely not a day, but you know he would take some time uh, to deliberate, ad uh, deliberandum. Uh, note on quid after, after the words si, nisi, num, and ne, all the alleys go away. So after C, Nisi, Num, N U M, and Ne, N E, when you have a Q U word following it, like quid or quiz or quo or something like that, all the alleys go away. So when you're translating this quid, imagine it has an alley in front of it A L I Q U I D. So um, a mat, you would translate it as if it were C Ali quid, well, and if they wanted anything. Um, literally, it's just if they wanted what. Um, so if they wanted a thing, uh, they should return on the eyes of April. All right, that does it. Just over, or uh, just about a class period's worth of material for all of that. Um, 
and that does it for what we read in the Latin of Book 1. However, for the AP exam, you want to read all of Book 1, and the rest of Book 1 is in our textbooks um, in the back in English. Uh, 1 through 7, of course, is not. You read those in Latin. But 8 through 50, whatever, 8 through 50, whatever, is, uh, is available in English in the back. Read through those to see how this turns out. Spoilers, Caesar doesn't lose. Um, so check that out, um, and then we pick up in book four next time. Um, as always, if you have any questions, um, you can comment down below, you can email me, you can hit me up in class, whatever works. Um, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Wall later.